Hello Cleverscopers. Today I'm going to show you how we capture and review a signal. On the left we have the control panel. This is what you use to start capturing a signal and setting the trigger values. On the right we have the scope display. This is a what you see is what you get display. The left hand axis sets the A channel amplitude range. The right hand side sets the B channel amplitude range and the x-axis sets the time you capture. Zero is the time of the trigger. The simplest way to capture an unknown signal is to click Auto Set. So here we go. OK, it's captured a signal. Let's have a look at the signal that we've captured. On the left-hand side, we have the A-channel axes. This has been changed so that the A-channel occupies the lower half of the graph. You can see the offset of the signal is actually minus 2 volts. On the right hand side we have the B channel and the B channel signal occupies the upper half of the graph. The center of the signal is actually at about 3 volts so both of those signals are offset from 0. The graph has automatically scaled to fit the A channel signal. We get about 4 or 5 cycles. We can see what the trigger source is by looking at the trigger source on the control panel. Once you've captured a signal, you can explore it, either live or stopped. Let's start capturing again. Here's the signal. We can explore the signal either by moving it around, like this, or we can go and zoom in just a portion of the waveform. For example, we can choose the magnify tool and expand just a section of the waveform. Once we've got the section the size we want, we can move around like this. You might notice that the line below the graph is horizontal. That's because the analog to digital converter is only converting the chunk of waveform that you see. And so when you move it, we're seeing the bit that was below the area that we were looking at. Notice that the trigger is automatically moved around as we explore the waveform. This makes for very easy exploration of a moving signal. You can just go around like this and uh, have a look. We have history, so if we click the back history button, it'll show us where we came from. I'll do this until we get back to where we were. There we are. And you can go forward as well if you like. Now having captured the waveform and being able to explore it, we can also stop it and explore it after that. Back to the magnify tool and we can just zoom on this portion. And again, we can move around. This time of course we've got a captured signal, so it's there waiting for us to have a look at. you notice that the division values faults per division or time per division are given above the graph. You can change the division values by using the expand and contract buttons. This is the contract button. This is the expand button. We can do the same on time. So this is the contract button. You'll see the time going from 200 to 250 microseconds. And this is the expand button. We can also use the wheel on the scroll wheel of the mouse to act as a virtual knob. It works on the last button clicked, so now I can change time. If I click here, I can change amplitude. You can also change the axis values directly if you want to. Makes it useful if you want to have an exact value for your axes. So let's change this here to minus 3.5 and this value to minus 0.75. Often you just like to fit the graph to the signal. We have the fit buttons for that. Here's fit A and fit B. Simple. Right, I'll show you a bit about the trigger. Let's go back to capturing. We have a signal. You'll notice over here there is there are two lines with a plus above them. That's the trigger location. It's always at zero. To move the trigger, you can use the trigger tool. Here's the rising edge trigger tool. You see this line? If you move, grab it and move it, you'll see that the trigger position changes. If 
pretty simple. You want to make it go the other way, use the opposite direction trigger tool. Again, you can move it by dragging it. You can also set the trigger manually by just typing in the value. You can change the direction. And you can choose the channel. I'll set it to 3 volts. I hope this has given you a flavour of what you can do with a Cleviscope. We've got lots more videos on our website in the videos page, and there you can explore all the other things that you can do with a Cleviscope. See you there!